Uh, attempt number two or four. I don't know. I've lost count. All right. <laughs> Anyways, hello guys. We've got some interesting new spoilers from DND, the new DND set, as well as MH2. But honestly, I'm, I think I'm kind of. I was I was thinking to myself like, oh, I think the DND set will probably be more interesting. But the MH2 spoilers have been a little more, a little more interesting to be honest. But maybe we'll see something, see a difference later on. Anyways, we've got to go over every single card spoiled today so let's just let's just get into it first first foremost eh, we've got the lands these are pretty interesting i do have to say the first the the white and the blue one seem to be the most interesting to me in my opinion i think white because it looks a little more interesting than usual i'm a big advocate of the color and i think for the most part like most planes seem to be like pretty like bland like it's just usually like some wheat field you know some super super duper uber like incredibly boring lands i think but you know i guess that comes with the color um i do have to say this having like a like a sun in the background is interesting it's definitely interesting and not knowing what's actually happening in like the foreground is a little interesting as well is it a desert are they under the desert where are they it's it's cool i guess that can be said for a lot of this a lot of the lands here though Maybe it's just because I'm a big advocate, I'm a little biased, but I do think like the island and the swamp look pretty decent too. Um, I'm not too big of a fan, but I can definitely see how interesting these lands could appeal to a majority of people. Like they look like actual areas and like a D and D campaign. Like, oh, we're going to the mountain, and then you imagine like this huge mountainscape where it's, you know it's fog in the bottom and stuff like that. Like this is this is neat. This is like all in all, this is neat. I did to say like my favorites obviously the plains, and I, I can't help. But to think like the island isn't too interesting, but like maybe it is interesting. It's a big popular color. I think most people like the color blue's favorite color, as well as being also the color in Magic, right? Like blue is the color. Let's, like let's be honest. And so you know people are just gonna like it. It's probably gonna cost the most out of all of them. Um, it kind of reminiscent of actually the Zendikar um, Whirlpool Land. I think it's really close. Uh, if this came in like full art, that would be interesting. Um, Oh gosh, I was thinking to myself, like, I think these lands would be more interesting if they were full art. But more than I think of it, like, oh, please be full arts. Like, I know we're going to get spoiled, everyone's going to want full art all the time, but oh my gosh, like, for the D&D set, it just really puts you in the mood because, like, you can actually think of yourself being there, like, seeing more of it, just, it puts you in the mentality, right? I don't know, maybe that's just me. Anyways, let's go on to the actual interesting cards, or the cards of interest that aren't just, I don't know, lands. First card we have is Power Word Kill. I think this card is decent. I think it's definitely interesting to have this effect in a set that probably more particular to angels, demons, and devils and dragons, right? Like this set's probably gonna have a lot of those mythical creatures, just because like they're pretty popular. Um, specifically like dragons, like literally dungeons and dragons. I think this card's interesting to be at uncommon. Because I feel like most, it's it's gonna target some things, but like a lot of stuff is just not gonna be able to kill. Power would kill. Hmm. And I, I do like the I do like the flavor of this as well, because it's very much like oh, your little spell can't harm such a large like being, aka angels, demons, and devils and dragons. So like that's that's it's kind of nice nice little flavor there. Uh, all right. That's basically it. that's all I gotta say about this. Power kill. It's a neat spell. Honestly, I thought this would be more of a uh, a white card, just because usually white is able to like handle things that that have like high toughness or something like that, or low toughness in particular. But black and striped just kill things. So I can see this being in both places, uh, which is I think kind of interesting to see how this turned out. Uh, let's see what the actual text is. Blah blah blah. Issued a long heroic challenge. Then the lich felled him with a single word. <laughs> There you go. Kill. <laughs> All right, is it just like one whole word or just kill? I think it's just kill. Oh gosh. My noobness is showing. <laughs> Anyways, next next card. We have Prosperous Innkeeper. One in a green for essentially a mana dork with also a nice static ability to help against aggro? Question mark? This is nice because it really does show how treasure can be used in every color. And think this being like printed in DD set i wonder if it's gonna be a little more used like a more used token i know we've had food tokens for a while but seeing that treasures are evergreen now this is gonna be quite interesting to see how this plays in like other colors as well 
Um, I'm guessing other colors will definitely have treasures or treasure making generating cards later on in the mana cost. But like seeing this done in a green card, this is like the mana dork. Like this is probably the mana dork of this of the set. I'm wondering though. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe maybe it won't though. Maybe it won't be. Although having this sort of card in like this in like the the first spoiler makes me think. Like how how else is the set gonna shape out? Also fun fun fact that they, they it looks like they changed to halflings instead of like changelings or uh Kipkin. No, Kipkin were the were the like equivalent, I think. Which is interesting. I think I'd prefer Kipkin just so we don't have as many types. But this is fine. I guess halfling is like a also happens like a hobbit, right? Like hobbits are halflings. This is this is neat. This is neat. I like it. I'm really feeling it. <laughs> I can definitely imagine like for a campaign, you guys just like using these cards. Um, I know we had had like um, didn't we have like a D and D plane for Ravnica? What if we had a D and D plane for like D and D? Wait a minute. <laughs> Never mind. Don't mind me. Uh, next up we have Tiamat, two Wooburg for legendary creature Dragon God. Jeez. Oh, this looks sick. When Tiamat enters the battlefield, if you cast it, search your library for up to five dragon cards not named Tiamat that each have different names. Reel them, put them into your hand, then shuffle. Dragon cards. Wait, does this does this get Nicol Bolas, at least the Planeswalker one, because he's a dragon god of her subtype, I think? Oh, this is going to be interesting. I mean, seven mana, draw five, or two for five. It's definitely going to be played in EDH. Play this with like Morphon. Neat card. Definitely neat card. I wonder if they're having Bayamet or the like equivalent. Like if they have Tiamat, you gotta have Bayamet, right? I don't know. I hope so. I think it'd be I think it'd be interesting. Also, I think so because didn't they have like that one dude on the uh, box art? I think they did. Okay, next up we have the last spell. Wait, wait is it the last spell? Okay, it's second last spell. We have Portable Hole. This one was a little weird to me. Not because it didn't seem it seemed bad, but I was like, oh, you could have stretched it just one more to make it like a like a funky mana leak. Where it's like exile target non-land permanent with power tough or I'm sorry, value three or less. That way everyone's gonna be playing white, but maybe that's maybe that's too strong. That actually does sound a little too strong for one white. Just handle any permanent. Ooh. Oh, of course, it's non-land permanent, but still. As it stands so far, I think this is better as an aggro card. Where like if you're playing against Gruel Aggro or any other aggro deck, this is probably where you want to go in a white X deck. If you're not playing black. I think black or red. Eh, this is like shock, right? Like this is equivalent to shock. But it hits more things. Doesn't go face. I could see this being played. In, in historic, at least. Hits search for Azkanta, which I have a control a mono white control deck. And that is going to be pretty strong. Also, hitting mono red or mono red prison, I can hit the mind stones with this. This is going to hit you some. This is going to hand you some nice tempo. I think this is going to be great. This is definitely going to be great for my my purposes, anyways. Although I don't see it scaling too well. Although I guess the further back your format, generally people play lower CMC spells, so this can become better. Maybe maybe it does have like eternal format play. I'd be interested to see how how far back this this card goes. I think it's neat though. I think it's definitely a nice little effect to have. Alright. Last but not least we have Vorpal Blade. Okay, now that I now that I said this card, I'm really interested to see if they're going to reprint Bag of Holding in this set. Because that's like literally a DND card. Anyways, Vorpal Blade. One black. For two black you can equip creature. It gets plus two plus O oh, and has death touch. Okay, so it, obviously the blade just like kills anything. And for eight mana, to end a turn, Vorpal Blade gains whenever equipped creature deals comp damage to a player, that player loses the game. Sounds about right. <laughs> uh, I don't think this card is like too crazy, but of course, in equipment decks that have black, you probably put this in, right? Um, can become a nice blocker as well as a nice, just like game ender. I think it'll be neat. But nothing really to say about this card. Anyways, so what do you guys think about the card revealed? Honestly, I'm thinking that the powered kill might be interesting and the portable hole. But Tiamat is probably the like the the craziest card revealed so far, right? Like it's seven mana draw five, two for five. 
And that's usually what you get for Wooberg. There's some nice cards. Hoping for like a Behemoth. I'm very curious to see if we're going to get like a weird party mechanic of some sort. I'm doubting we are because that was a Zendikar thing. Zendikar was sort of like the D&D equivalent to... I'm sorry, the magic equivalent to D&D. And this is like that magic equivalent to D&D too? I don't know. <laughs> um, interested in seeing what, what the classes we're getting in this set. Um, seeing that we got like halfling citizen and stuff like that. And we're getting angels, assuming, and demons and devils. It'll be interesting to see what we get. Anyways... Tell me you guys think in the comments below. Peace out, and I'll catch you guys later.